I think your uh, last sentence sums it all. I think we are the most hated panel in the room now, between you and the lunch. But uh, we'll try to make it worth for you. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much, uh, all the panelists uh, joining in today. Uh, I think you, we all talking about generative AI since morning and maybe since weeks or since months. Uh, and it's surprising to know that uh, I think it's a decadal moment for all of us. Uh, it just a little over one year since generative AI has arrived. I think the transformation and the recall and the everything to do around it has been really impressive. I think cloud took almost 10 years to make that kind of waves. And uh, Gen AI just took almost uh, not even a year to make those kind of waves. So I think, so with that, uh, I think in this panel, uh, we will be talking about real use cases. Uh, how are we using generative AI from hype to reality? I think that's one area we will touch upon. How will we bringing more relevance uh, using responsible AI? Uh, and we are creating a balance between the trust and uh, customer trust and uh, loyalty, conversions, and optimization, as, as what marketers say, uh, and using generative AI. So um, I would like to start uh, with uh, uh, my, my first question. Uh, and this is to do about uh, relevance to, to customers. And maybe I'd like to start with you, Kavita. Is, uh, today, I think we are reaching out to prospects, customers through multiple channels. It's creating a lot of noise and to some level spamming as well. Uh, how do you uh, maintain relevancy to customers, right? And how do you make sure that uh, when we reach out to them, we reach out to them in the medium they, they would prefer and, uh, and it's more relevant as a message? Sure. Uh, thank you for that question. So, as you all would be aware, LNT Finance has a wide spectrum of products uh, ranging from rural finance, microloans, uh, tractor finance, as well as urban finance. So, it's, it's a really wide audience that we cater to. Um, also, therefore, uh, you know, our mission is uh, to leverage AI not just to sort of, uh, you know, maximize reach, but also try to create, um, let's say, customer delight, which is what is the right uh, point in the consumer's journey that you know we need to sort of uh, put our message out there. Uh, so we really look at uh, the what, the who, and the how of you know our campaigns. Uh, so this, to start with, uh, you know, in order to understand our consumers really well. We sort of assimilate the data on our consumers across touch points and really create those uh, understanding of the individual preferences, uh, you know, try to find out which are the most effective ways to reach to the consumer, you know, uh, eliminate ineffective, uh, let's say, campaigns uh, and, and create those tailor-made solutions uh, for, for, for our audience. Uh, the other piece which is really important is to sort of understand the causality of consumer behavior. So we actually, you know, deep dive into understand why the consumer is behaving in a certain way and therefore target our communication in accordance to that. So a simple example, you know, would be that let's say you have a credit score which, uh, you know, all of us have uh, to sort of uh, understand the credit worthiness of, you know, our, our consumers. Now. Uh, Let's say we know out of uh, you know the search history of of our consumers that all those who would have searched or found out information upon their credit score in the last three months have a higher propensity to consume a loan. So therefore, you know, using this causality of consumer behavior uh, and then targeting creates that you know, customer delight because they are in that journey of exploring, uh, let's say, different solutions, uh, loan solutions. And one such behavior that they exhibit is to really, uh, you know, check on their credit score. And that's really our, let's say, you know, marker to know that if the consumer is searching their credit or is finding out about their credit score, there is a very high propensity for them to, you know, um, you know, convert for a loan. And that's the time that we then target our communication with the relevant messaging. And all of this is obviously enabled because through AI, we have assimilated uh, the behavior of consumer across different touch points. Um, then, of course, is really the who, which is, uh, you know, using uh, 
cohorts, uh, you know, create those different personas of consumer. And since I said we have a very large spectrum, uh, we have as high as 50 personas in the rural audience itself, because that's the kind of behavioral pattern that each uh, cohort really exhibits. And therefore, as uh, sharper we get in terms of defining these cohorts, the better is obviously, you know, our, our campaign marketing. So that's really the parameters that, you know, we look at uh, that, that can help to create customer delight. Yeah, no, thanks. Uh, thanks, Kavita. I think uh, uh, this is interesting because you touched upon a very important point about uh, reaching customers at scale, relevance, and uh, you touched upon interacting with them in the dialects that they understand. I think India is a very diverse country, multiple dialects, literacy levels are very, very different. So I think uh, you, you touched upon those areas. Uh, Hector, uh, I think in the financial services space, uh, Tata Capital, again, you know, you engage with customers with all, uh, all spectrums, you know, different demographic profiles. How do you see the reaching out to them with relevance? So, um, I mean, whatever Kaveda spoke is quite frankly, uh, absolutely exactly applicable to Tata Capital also because uh, we have all sorts of retail uh, products, uh, corporate products, we have an investment uh, product. So um, I think what AI allows you to do is of course scale because there are lots of personas that you can work on like Avita was saying and uh, uh, of course the tat with which you are uh, you know, reaching out the, um, I would not actually, uh, let me take it back, not that the uh, nimbleness with which you are replying yeah. is, uh, uh, you know, obviously comes from yeah. uh, Gen AI. And, uh, but I, we were discussing uh, uh, when we met with it that mm. I think relevance is really, really underrated. Okay. Um, when I say that, I mean that even today, uh, Google is going to crawl your content, for example, on relevancy. It's, yes, you need to have enough keywords put in there. I'm, I'm really oversimplifying here, but what I mean to say is that if you implement Gen AI and if you are able to generate 200 blogs instead of 100, doesn't mean you generate 200 blogs. The idea is to still generate 100 blogs with Relevant. relevancy in, at the core of it, right? Yeah. So, so yeah, so I'm saying uh, it does provide a lot of scale, does provide a lot of uh, improvement on how soon we can, you know, uh, uh, solution yeah. things for our customers. And definitely it does bring in a lot of uh, uh, relevancy, not in all aspects, not in everything, because it is largely prompt driven yeah. to a great extent. But uh, I think it provides us another world altogether compared yeah. to, uh, you know, what, what we were in maybe a year ago. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Hector. So moving on to, I think, uh, the uh, three panelists we have is from Life Insurance. I think one of the most toughest product to sell and uh, you realize the value when you're no more. Uh, but interestingly, would like to hear from you, uh, Gitanjali, uh, uh, that uh, in the current scheme of things, like uh, when you reach out to customers uh, and we, we heard Kavita, we heard... Uh, Hector, from a relevancy standpoint, making, making it more relevant across different channels. Uh, how do you simplify the message? How do you personalize the message uh, and deliver at scale using generative AI, right? And uh, also make them understand, right, that, uh, okay, and, and engage with them at scale because most of the interactions by the customers genuinely happens, in my view, at the claim processing level, not at the sales level, right? So how do you bring that balance together? Uh, there are uh, two areas that I'd like to touch upon. Uh, of course, the category is extremely complex, as we all know, right? The products, uh, I, the fact that we haven't even been able to scale our online uh, marketing efforts uh, is because of the fact that the customer needs, even today, a human interface to engage and uh, converse, to understand what is it that we have to offer and uh, how is it that we can help them in their financial goals. Uh, Gen AI, of course, helps simplify that part because uh, at scale, it simply uh, breaks down uh, what is it that the customer can gain if 
his capacity is X versus another capacity, person's capacity is Y, right? Uh, everybody's desires are different, life stages are different, uh, input, output of the household is different, so it just breaks it down to that level. Uh, the other thing, uh, and I can speak for the entire category and my fellow panelists also here, we are uh, a category that is plagued with a lot of misinformation. It's already complex and people take advantage of the fact because, yes, uh, it, it's not still a pull product, it is a push product. Uh, with this, there is seamlessness of uh, offerings, there is seamless, seamlessness of the communication that we have and the numbers specifically, which I think it, Gen AI is going to play a much larger role to bring ethics into the category. It is, uh, of course, doing exactly what uh, uh, my fellow panelists Hector and Kavita also mentioned, it's going to help us marketeers uh, in prospecting and uh, customer experience, but I think on a, on a much bigger level, it is going to help us uh, perhaps in many ways build trust into the category. Yeah, yeah. No, well said, uh, Gitanjali. I think this brings me uh, one point of view. Uh, most of the marketers out here in the room, I think we struggle to have the integration of gener generative AI with our legacy systems, right? How do we make sure that we bring the journeys together? Customer doesn't care whether you're reaching out to him at an acquisition level or at a service level. So, Iram, would you like to touch upon that? How, how do you resolving that uh, entire conundrum about... Uh... Yeah, thanks, Udit. Uh, so, f let's take a step back, right? Uh, let us first understand what is AI going to do for the customers? We are talking from a perspective of marketers, which is obviously yeah. what we're talking about, but what does the customer expect? And the customer mm. always expects that you are on time and personalized. So we speak about hyper-personalization, right? How is AI going to help me hyper-personalize my message and end to the lady who is my prospect? That is the yeah. key question. Mm. And I think everybody will he he yeah. agree that AI is giving you unlimited scope of reaching your customers. First of all, I, it's three things, right? AI does three things. One, the amount of data with which we are grappling is humongous in all uh, organizations. First and foremost, we must understand, and that's what we did in AGS Federal Life Insurance, we used AI to first of all segregate and segment our customers, okay? I know my customer's age, geography, where is she's coming from, whether she's a mother or not, but I also know through various interactions how many times she has complained to me, how many times she has raised a ticket, what was the complaint? Was her, uh, the complaint resolved or not? Was it resolved in time? What are the behaviors? I'm tracking her online behavior. Mm. AI helps me to segment her and compartmentalize, compartmentalize uh, customers like her into segments. Then what AI helps us to do is targeted communication. Marketing is all about communication. AI as a tool is helping us at, at AGS Federal to target segment-wise communication. And so today, when I'm sending a, a, an online uh, letter to my customers, at least 70, 17, 17 18 types of uh, communications go to the same segments. So that's, that's what AI is helping us to do. The, and the last bit, which is marketing and streamlining your campaigns. As, as, as marketers, we have always uh, grappled with this uh, notion that, okay, I'll hire a media agency, I'll hire a, a creative agency to take care of my marketing needs. Yes, that is essential because they are the ones, they are the experts in their domains. But together with them, we have to uh, keep this AI integration through various APIs to understanding of what mm. is emerging in the, mm. in the market and make use of those, the AI possibilities mm. to reach out to my customer with the right type of messaging. And that's what we are doing. Yeah. So I think according to me, these three are the main functionalities and pros of AI, yeah. which everybody should utilize. I think brilliant. I think well said, uh, Iram. Uh, it feels like uh, marketing is less of a marketing job, but of, a, of, of an information officer now, right? Or, or, a, or a technology officer for that matter. Uh, Abhishek, with that point, I want to touch upon, uh, do you see any kind of challenges uh, in terms of accepting AI internally in the organization or externally? How customers are reacting, how internally the teams are reacting? Do you see any kind of challenges from the AI standpoint? So, uh, you know, coming last in the panel, especially when 
third in the life insurance category within the same panel, so I will not have too much to add over here. <laughs> uh, but uh, the couple of challenges, you know, first of all, I see. सबसे पहले तो ना लोगों को समझाना ए आई है क्या एग्जैक्टली exactly. हम सब लोग यहाँ पे वी कीप ऑन टॉकिंग अबाउट ए आई ए आई ए आई आई डोंट थिंक वी ऑल अंडरस्टैंड इवन आई विल नॉट हैंड ऑन हार्ट इवन आई विल नॉट अंडरस्टैंड वॉट एग्जैक्टली इज ए आई वॉट डज इट डू वॉट डज इट डू विच वॉज नॉट बींग डन अर्लियर सो सबसे पहले फाइंडिंग एक्सेप्टेबिलिटी ए आई साउंड वेरी सेक्सी टू टॉक अबाउट वेरी गुड टू टॉक अबाउट बट एट द कोर वॉट डज ए आई डू इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट to explain and that is the challenge that we find that this is what ai does for you the second part the challenge that i see um, i briefly touched upon very briefly in the last panel but i'll probably talk a little more about that is you know one part in this we on the screen saying one of the parts the customer centricity that's mm. the key word over here okay. unfortunately in our industry na um, and it's a little controversial statement customer means end consumer unfortunately and i'm using the word unfortunately because and uh, gitanjali talk uh, touched upon this that hmm. bulk of the sale 92 and i'm giving an industry figure 92% of sales hmm. in this industry happens when there is an intermediary in between hmm. that intermediary could be a life insurance agent that could be a bank rm in your case most of the time it will be a bank rm uh it could be a rm of a corporate agent it could be a direct employee of yours but there's always somebody between the insurer as an organization and the customer and this interbid i will call this person a distributor for everybody's ease of understand we all talk about customer centricity customer centricity think of a situation where the product that you are selling is complex product that you are selling nobody wants to buy nobody In this room, nobody will get up in the morning and say, "Aaj mujhe life insurance karidna hai." Nobody. So product is complex. You don't want to buy it. And third, which is the industry doing is, we have missold in past. As an industry, we have missold in past. And uh, now, thankfully, because of an extremely strong, vigilant regulator plus a lot of soul searching by the companies, misselling is very down to minimum. It still exists, but it's fairly low. so complexity less trust and people don't want to buy you combine these three and you have a product which is extremely difficult to sell so therefore the person who's selling becomes so important to us unfortunately customer centricity mein is person ka koi bhi nobody thinks about this person so the need for the ai need for the new technology is also that when you are developing this when you are talking about this think of this person as well and i'm very specific to life insurance industry yeah yeah so therefore so what do we do about it so we actually do i would actually again a little more controversial statement we do more initiatives for gen ai towards the distributor side rather than the consumer side hmm. because number one it's more captive audience for me so i can explain to them what i'm trying to do second is i can get them to experiment a lot because it is also an experiment and third is we are learning we do not know what this can do what this cannot do in which direction can it go so because of the captive audience i can do a lot of controlled experiments which we try to do with gen ai and so therefore a bulk of our focus is actually towards the distributor side how can i create content for them which can at scale at vernacular you talked about vernacularization kavita talked about vernacularization so how can i create content for them which they can reach out to customers how i can help them to personalize their contact content for their customers so that they can personalize it and then offer it to our customers so a lot of work goes on that yeah a more towards that and less towards consumers no i think uh, well said and uh, you brought a lot of reality in fact while i was listening to you one of the use case comes into my mind is uh, i think there is a lot of fine print when the insurance policy or a document goes through i'm not sure any of you have actually read through a policy document at least i haven't at any point in time and even if i have tried to i've never understood it so using ai to to really answer a query from that small llm i think one of the interesting research not a research but a use case maybe an insurance industry is going through actually create a micro llm out there for policies that as a consumer i can actually query and ask whatever i want to and i get an answer which is very fair and transparent 
uh, right? Sometimes you really don't understand what is the causation that would happen. Yes, Hiram, please. Yeah, so uh, I'd like to, and very well said, Abhishek. And in fact, he, he mentioned, whatever the points he mentioned is, are true for most probably at some point or the other for all organizations. What I'd like to bring the discussion back to is the fact, what are we going to do, as Abhishek also pointed out, what are we going to do with the, with the AI now at our disposal? Now, I'll give you a use case uh, from our company, Aegis Federal. <clears throat> I don't know whether you guys know it, but our brand ambassador is Mr. Sachin Tendulkar, right? And um, uh, uh, he doesn't need any introdu introduction. He's the Bharat Ratan god of cricket. What we did with AI and Sachin Tendulkar, eight months back, as Udit, you rightly pointed, yeah. Nobody, you know, once the premium of an insurance policy is paid, first of all, nobody understands the policy. Then the biggest challenge which we all face is, at the time of renewal in the next year, nobody either remembers to renew the policy or they are reluctant to renew the policy. What we did was, we used generative AI, used Sachin Tendulkar, shot a small clip, a video, wherein Sachin Tendulkar is saying, so suppose if I'm the policy holder, Eram Kidwai gets a personalized WhatsApp message where Sachin is saying, hey, Eram Kidwai, thank you very much for being, you know, a customer of Aegis Federal. Yeah. And then he goes on to explain the benefits of renewal, timely renewal. Now, just imagine, and when we, when we conceptualized this concept, it was a novel idea. Sachin himself liked it a lot. Our CEO supported us uh, full-fledgedly. Believe you me, we wanted this to be an initiative to increase our renewals, right? for more and more people to come and pay renewals in time. It become, these videos went on to become viral videos. Because just imagine you're getting a message, Sachin is calling you by name, and then telling you the benefits of paying renewal in time, right? And, and you'll, you're gonna share it with your entire group. So, so this is one use case which you can take up. We were the first ones to do, again, we were the first ones, at least in the BFSI segment in India, to use AI, two and a half years back, because we realized the potential that AI is one tool that will be able to s flip your business to the positive side yeah. and, and take advantage of the technology rather than just wait for somebody else to take decisions and then copy it. Mm. So I think like the technology industry and like AI, yeah. it will now serve corporates to be proactive and innovative. You need to take that leap. And for that leap, as he rightly said, first of all, you need to understand what are the possibilities. Just by talking about them won't help, right? So I think that that's that's something which which needs to be the norm of the day. Yeah, please, uh, Iram, you should share that video with me because a much younger uh, cricketer who's our brand ambassador is hesitant to uh, get on the generative AI bandwagon. So. But uh, in this whole mesh of uh, like, uh, as a marketer, we care about optimization. We care about conversions, but at the same time, we also care about uh, you know not losing the customer, especially in the category that you belong, right? Also in the financial services space, where you actually have into micro lending, right? And also you want to create uh, maybe a term called brand loyalty, which perhaps don't exist so much now in these days in the age of AI and being so standardized thing. Where do you see the balance? Uh, maybe any one of you, like uh, Pitanji, do you want to add up, and maybe Kavita, then you can add up. Sure. So, um, so obviously, uh, like I said previously, um, AI significantly helps us to drive uh, brand loyalty. And one good use case for us is uh, really, you know, improving, let's say, the conversions amongst the first-time uh, loan applicants. Uh, now, if you know, uh, a large part of India or Indians still don't have, let's say, a credit score. And if I ask around this room as well, how many of you all are aware of or have, uh, you know, understanding of your credit score. Uh, you know, that, that is significantly solved by uh, the use of AI. Because, um, you know, in the past, we would have a lot of first-time loan applicants, as high as 50%, being rejected, uh, you know, for their loan applicant uh, application because um, of overemphasis on the credit history or lack of a credit score. Uh, now, that's where AI has helped significantly because with the use of AI, we're able to solve this problem through 
predictive analysis, uh, you know, through tracking the digital footprints uh, of our consumers, uh, and also to do uh, what I say a good amount of segmentation. So, you know, observing the behavior of the consumers online, their online shopping, um, their social media profiles, or, you know, even the way they are sort of, uh, you know, having their bills, utility bills paid out. Now, all of this helps you to assess you know, the credit worthiness of an uh, individual on a real-time basis. In any typical scenario, let's say this person's loan would have been rejected, but all thanks to AI uh, and the recent credit uh, behavior, uh, you know, you are able to therefore improve the probability of, uh, you know, offering a loan. So I think that opens up a very large opportunity to really uh, tap into the first time loan applicants who would have otherwise been rejected, but all thanks to AI, uh, you know, there's a lot of credit worthiness that we can actually track on, on a real time basis. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, so, uh, you mentioned about uh, brand loyalty, Udit. I think uh, it opens a different Pandora box because the spectrum is extremely wide. I mean, from deodorant to banking, right? Uh, the brand loyalty differs extremely yes. in each of these categories. Uh, so, I don't think it's always brand loyalty, which is a challenge, especially in financial services, because uh, you stick to your RM and you have certain relationship and faith where you're giving your money uh, to someone to invest and at the same time taking money and the ease of it, etc. So, uh, the parameters uh, and the dynamics are extremely different. Uh, what I definitely uh, think that organizations need to look within themselves, build a culture of uh, upskilling themselves, uh, creating a lot of understanding of it because in reality, our infosec still does not allow a lot of us to have uh, open network and uh, even have chat GPT and Gen AI tools on our respective machines because there's a lot of uh, unknown as a lot of us also spoke about that the areas that we do not know from an ethics stand, from a, from a compliance standpoint, from a regulatory standpoint. So we ourselves need to, uh, and, and I think it's, it's, it's uh, a concern globally, otherwise uh, we would have educated ourselves more. But then again, we need to be more open even as organizations to understand the areas it can impact, whether it is analytics or it's customer service or it is campaigns. It has an, it, it's a tool that is going to enable like calculators uh, and, and fasten our go-to-market strategies in every sense. So education within the organization is extremely critical and it has to be top-down driven. It has to be a conversation that is beyond just the marketing function uh, and in, permeate into every department of the organization. No, I'm glad you touched upon it. I think this is one of the uh, big internal challenges, right, when you actually embrace AI within the organizations. So having talk about AI and uh, having to use AI and having to implement AI internally, I think there are three different things. And you, you spoke about actually implementing AI, building that uh, infrastructure and acceptability from, from various things. And I, I think this is bringing me to another question about uh, responsible AI, right? I think we are all using, you all are into the regulated part, uh, uh, regulated businesses. So like Hector, we want to start with you. How do you see this whole piece of responsible AI? Like for example, voice bots, I'm, I'm uh, hearing about voice cloning for that matter, right? I'm hearing about many other instances about where uh, AI could be not used very uh, responsibly. Uh, DPDP bill here in India released. We are moving towards the GDPR era. So how do you see this whole uh, balance between privacy and trust? No, so I think coming from what Abhishek spoke earlier, see, we firstly need to um, choose as organizations what seems to be um, the use cases that we want to solve immediately through AI, right? And what seems like sort of a black hole probably needs to, you know, we need to wait it out, uh, you know, till we have a, a certain confidence in, in that system. Secondly, uh, see, we were discussing this earlier also. I think uh, use cases, there are a plethora of them. I don't think there is any uh, scarcity of that. You can use it on, uh, you know, for, for your uh, online reputation management. You can use it uh, on your uh, web uh, 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 search tool. Uh, you can use it on your chatbot, you can, I mean, uh, it's endless. In fact, uh, adding to what Abhishek was saying earlier, we've actually implemented it even for uh, our uh, credit managers, you know. Uh, it's underway, it's not implemented yet, but, uh, you know, which will 
reduce, uh, this is on the corporate side, uh, corporate lending, uh, which will reduce the, um, uh, the time taken for credit assessment dramatically. Hmm. But again, right now, it is within the realm of the information that is fed to Gen uh, uh, AI, right? So, therefore, there is confidence that there is no question of any uh, misuse. Hmm. Uh, having said that, we have to wait it out. I mean, I don't think everything has to be implemented uh, immediately. Uh, although we are excited and we are exploring all possibilities, voice to text, the other way around. I mean, yeah. uh, but we have to hold on to our horses before we, you know, go crazy on it. Yeah, uh, because this is a very interesting uh, part, right? Uh, coming from a regulated industry, it's not easy to implement everything, perhaps what could be easy for other industries, right? And with the AI regulation bill coming up uh, in India, right? Abhishek, would you like to add something like how will it really touch upon uh, specifically customer interactions in, in the PFSI space? Yeah, so um, coming back to customer centricity, for a life insurance business, the ultimate uh, measure of customer centricity that is very easy to understand by external people is a claim settlement ratio. You know, most of the time, many times, one of the deciding factors for people while choosing an insurance claim. is uh, the claim settlement ratio. So, very broadly, if I see what is claim settlement ratio, number of claims that I have received versus number of claims that I have settled. If claim settlement ratio is lower, normal the perception is that this probably company is rejecting a lot of claims. That is the perception. Now, how is AI helping in this? And let me give you an example. To answer that question, you have to first ask a question, why does a claim get reject? Correct. Does the insurance company really don't want to pay claims? No. All insurance companies, all insurance company wants to pay claims. Because that is the moment of truth, that is the reason why we are in business. Because when customer has decided to take a policy from us, customer has given the money, I have given only a piece of paper to the customer, which is a promise, which is that if you are not there, I am going to take care of the financial needs of your family. That's the promise. And therefore, all insurance companies wants to pay. Why does a claim get rejected? Claim gets rejected most of the time only in a scenario when the customer or without the knowledge of the customer, the distributor has filled in something in the application form which is not true. And most of the time, these wrong information is non-disclosures. Non-disclosures regarding health, non-disclosures regarding other financial products that you have anything but non-disclosure. So that means if I have an incoming policy which is a non-disclosure, when the time for claim comes, and if it is within three years, after three years, you can't reject a claim. That's the law. Hmm. Within three years, an insurance company can reject a claim. If a wrong policy has come in, and by the time the claim comes, and it is within three years, I as an insurance company will investigate. And if, if it was non-disclosure, I will have no other option but to reject it indirectly impacting my claim settlement ratio, indirectly impacting my customer centricity. So how does AI help in this? We have models running. That whenever a case comes in, I have my models running. These models have been perfected over a period of time. That depending on the parameters, I know that this cohort looks risky. Although I have agreed to underwrite this policy, but this cohort looks risky. So what we do, and in my previous panel, I talked about that human connection. We then look at these cases, case by case, and try to do a prior investigation so that a wrong policy does not enter. Wrong policy does not enter, what is my main motive? My main motive is only so that my claim settlement ratio earlier, later hmm. could not get impacted, should not get impacted. As we say, garbage in, garbage out, woi hoga. Agar if you do not have these checks and balances in place, AI is a wonderful use case in this, wonderful use case. In fact, what we have done is the successful, the, this model which has been for us, and we have been running it for close to two years now. It's so perfect now, it's close to, it works on a close to 90-95% accuracy right now. Okay, if that model has thrown up a case, it is quite sure that this case might be something problem with that. What has that done? Obviously, there's a financial implication and it has done wonders for that. 
what it has done is it has improved the acceptability of AI within the organization. Nice. So now we have teams coming up that I have this problem, can AI help me solve this problem? Mm. And a good part of a solution is always defining the problem. Mm. Classic days when market research used to be really, really followed pro very rigorously, if you have defined the research objective very clearly, you will get a good output. If you have not defined, you will never get a good output. Similarly is case with the AI. As long as you have been able to define your problem correctly, you will have a tool, you will have a model, you will have a working thesis which will come and give you a solution. Spend some time in defining the problem. Stay in the problem and you are going to get a fantastic output. Good. Thanks. Thanks, Abhishek. I, uh, just a related question around uh, Iram maybe or Gitanjali, anybody of you can contribute. Uh, how we, 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 Abhishek, you talked about how AI is creating differentiation within the company, reaching out uh, to the customers, creating more speed of execution, right? Uh, Iram, how is it uh, customers are accepting that, right? How is customer accepting to react with AI for that matter? We are all talking about the age of humanoids where humans and bots will come together. I hear about things like digital agents and everything. So how, how is it customer acceptance coming in and there, and do you see a shift out there? Maybe any, any light on that? Very, very valid question, Odit. So um, let's, I'll split it into two parts, right? First is customer expectation, which I touched upon briefly in my uh, opening statement. What does the customer expect from you today? My 13-year-old son, and I'll give you a very short story, eight months back, my 13-year-old son came to me, said, Papa, I've got a video to show you. I said, fine, show it to me. We are both uh, football freaks, so I thought it's going to show me a football video. He showed it to me, and there I was. I was, it was me, myself, speaking and saying that I should allow my son and my daughter more recreation time and not force them to study, <laughs> right? Some generative AI app he picked up and, 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 and did this because he had my videos, he had my face, he had my voice. And it was a funny thing, we all laughed. But you come to think of it, a 13-year-old person can do this to you free of cost. Now go back to his psyche. People are customers. Forget about 13-year-olds. They are future customers. What will a 20, a 25-year-old, a 35-year-old, or even a 45-year-old intelligent customer expect from your brand? Will they not expect that you should have all touch points covered as a corporate, as a company? Forget about the industry also. That is the least expectation. When internet came into existence, after three years or four years, do you think that businesses anywhere across the world expected you to liaise with them through letters or inland notes? No. They expected you to email them, right? That's the same expectation the customers will hold. I mean, needless to say, you don't need to think about that, that expectation. It is already, he has or she has already started expecting you to use these new mechanisms and technological advancements to touch base with, with her, your customer. Now coming on to the second part. We always say hyper-personalization, right? AI and tools like ML, deep ML, deep learning, and algorithms-based models give you an opportunity to hyper-personalize. Because once you use AI mechanisms and you, you have API integrations with your in-built, in uh, in-house uh, capabilities, what you'll do is you'll segment them, you'll give them targeted communication, you'll uh, use their own data to reach out to them in a better manner and explain to them what they need to know from your services, from your offerings. So I think that is, that is how we should, as corporates, look at it and certainly as marketers because it's making my job easier and my, and my team's job easier. I have more time to think and strategize rather than run around agencies and do the legwork. So I think that's the biggest advantage and we should exploit AI. Yeah, no, thanks. Uh, Gitanjali, would you like to add how Gen Z is reacting to these uh, AI-led interactions? I'll probably uh, paraphrase uh, uh, what, uh, in fact, Iram also mentioned. Uh, we're asking this questions, question two years too late. Uh, we're in the world of Netflix and Amazon as consumers ourselves. 
uh, we ourselves are extremely used to hyper personalization. So I won't say consumers are reacting. I think they might be thinking in their heads that, hey, it's finally come to this category as well. So, uh, because clearly, I mean, we should have done this two years ago when it, uh, it was still a big talk of the town when Cadbury launched the campaign which eventually got them cans, uh, which was two years ago. So it is not new, the subject is not new anymore. As organizations, we are late at, so, at, at certain categories. Uh, we are not only late, we are still very scared. And I think every passing day, we are uh, becoming stale in this conversation yeah. and not being right in, uh, in helping our businesses or the customer or the distributor uh, in expediting the speed to go to market. Uh, COVID changed many things for us, right? We're talking of a generation that's, and, and many of us here are accomplice uh, where we spend hours in uh, doom scrolling uh, and, and the algorithms there are also using yeah. the same tools as ours, right? So uh, we need content on the fly. Uh, I mean, there were times that it, organizations used to produce two to three films a year. That also is the largest number. Right now that has come down to two to three films a week. Wow. And we have to account for time, we have to account for smartness using such platforms, we have to account for budgets. Yeah. And uh, yes, there will be agencies which will also have to help us and support us in this ecosystem. Yeah. Because I will never have the kind of budget to produce this much content uh, in a year, right? Yeah. So we all will have to be extremely smart to play catch up yeah. to give the consumer what he needs and what he's been used to because consumer doesn't care whether your insurance or your Amazon. I, I need the same experience from everybody that I'm engaging with. Yeah. Yeah. No, thanks. I think uh, we're just coming to the end. Uh, before we conclude, I just would want to ask, and uh, 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 this is kind of a one, uh, one answer, like a rapid fire kind of a thing, maybe. Uh, any, any generative AI, or forget about generative AI, any AI tool that you're currently using to engage with customers, or uh, which is market facing? which is not internal pacing, right? Uh, to improve the speed of execution, speed of response to customers, or uh, building more uh, engagement with stickiness uh, with, with the customers. Anything, any one tool that you must be using, uh, Kavita? Uh, I think uh, clearly in this age of uh, video and image, uh, all the newer technologies that are emerging there, uh, so, you know, especially analyzing the video interaction, so we do a lot of video KYC or video PDs, et cetera, nice. with our consumers. And, you know, at that touch point, how is it that we can assim assimilate a lot more uh, understanding about the ecosystem of our users, uh, you know, what habitat are they in, what would possibly be their lifestyle, and therefore, you know, sharpen uh, our, uh, let's say, targeting to that user base just uh, via that one interaction. So get a lot more out of, uh, out of that interaction to, to sharply target is one tool that, you know, we would use increasingly. We would increasingly. So, um, I think, uh, like I said before, in uh, possibly everything, I mean, uh, all projects have not come to fruition, but everything, like from, uh, uh, you know, integrating, our, integrating Gen AI on our uh, ORM tool to uh, doing that for our call center, to doing that, I gave you the example of, uh, yeah. you know, credit managers uh, uh, very soon getting, uh, uh, you know, access to something which will turn their cycle of generating that report from probably one or two days to just 15 minutes, wow. right? And doesn't mean his job is over, but yeah. the fact that he or she can um, rely on that to, you know, kind of look at that report within 15 minutes is going to give him or her so much more uh, uh, time to evaluate better rather than always there being a gun on uh, their head to pass on cases quickly, right? So, the, apart that, uh, uh, email automation is obviously something for, for service uh, uh, that uh, we've already implemented, chatbot automation is already implemented. So, um, I think uh, lots of cases, but in images and videos, I personally feel that there is still some bit of, um, 
um, lack of clarity in terms of whose responsibility it is and uh, as far as copyright infringement is concerned. So we are uh, using, but we are using with caution um, because we consulted uh, legal as well as multiple, uh, uh, you know, uh, tools and all of them had the same uh, kind of uh, commitment which is that you can, it's your right to use but it does not specifically remove copyright infringement from the conversation. So got which it. is why uh, we are using but with caution. Got it, got it. Uh, so, um, in fact, uh, I think it's a peril of the category. Uh, data security is extremely critical for us, uh, both for ethical reasons and compliance reasons, right? Uh, we do not use anything that is available in the open internet. Uh, we have very strong NDAs with certain agencies uh, where uh, data is passed through uh, APIs and not really punched into a chat box on open internet. Uh, so there are certain agencies uh, where extremely uh, robust IT integration has taken place to pass that uh, data. Sure. So, um, so we've been using obviously chat AI chatbots and uh, um, even email chatbots and, and stuff like that. We are uh, very soon going to introduce something like, which is called, uh, you know, MediAssist, which is instead of going uh, and giving your blood sample, uh, we'll be just taking a video, a small video of two minutes, yeah. and the AI video will throw up possibilities of certain diseases, wow. and that will that will most probably help us to uh, underwrite the policy in a much, much better manner and much faster manner. But having said that, we are very, very mm. conscious about the fact, uh, as Gitanjali pointed out, cyber security is at the epitome when it comes to decision making at our organization at AGS Federal. Mm. We do not want to compromise on anything mm. which has got to do with the personal space of my customer. Mm. And that is going to be always the priority. Uh, and, and I mean, uh, as a marketer, uh, we did it two years back and very soon, I think next week we are releasing a small, uh, our mainline ad campaign with Sachin, where mm. you're going to see a Sachin Tendulkar who is a five-year-old an eight-year-old, a 10-year-old, a 16-year-old when he made a debut at Lahore. And it's AI generated? No, I, I can't divulge the, 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 <laughs> the, the storyline, but you'll get to see it soon. So Brilliant. yes, using AI, but very, very responsibly is the key and mantra at AGS Center. Nice, nice. Uh, normal, as I said, um, as my fellow participants have said, uh, data privacy and security is very important, especially uh, we come from a highly regulated industry, highly regulated. Within those boundaries, things like externally available or centrally available, like EKYC, CKYC, uh, video verifications of customers, chatbots, whatever is available right now, we mm. try to use all of them. Some we are successful, some we are not, but it's always a journey. So. Yeah. You know, one of the interesting things happened. Uh, I asked the panel, give me one tool, right? And I was patiently listening. None of you actually mentioned one tool, and this is very interesting. It actually cannot be one tool. It's a combination of tools, right? And each one of you actually spoke about combination of things to solve a problem, right? And uh, one of the interesting things that came out to me as a takeaway that each one of you is so concerned about the problem that you want to solve doesn't mean that you have to have a stack of AI to do it, right? And uh, very focused on the responsible AI uh, as well. Uh, my takeaway from this panel is like um, AI everywhere, you really can't escape. Right, uh, you are using AI for the ease of business and ease of customer doing business with you, and uh, actually, f it feels like the future of customer and the future of customer conversation is like you engage with a customer with a context, right? So unless you have a context which is completely proper, uh, and AI derives in forms of segmentation, in terms of preferences, in terms of dialects. Uh, AI just helps you reach out in, in, the, in the right context. So uh, thank you so much.